At the start of the movie, Dodge sits in a futuristic-looking waiting room of a company named Tiro Fund. Dodge is a real estate developer in Detroit who's drowning in debt and is very close to being financially ruined. The main cause of his financial woes is a bad investment that he made by purchasing a rundown, high-rise office building called the Carrington that he hasn't been able to sell. The building is in such terrible shape that Dodge hasn't been able to attract tenants, and he doesn't have the money to make improvements to the building. Adding to Dodge's financial pressure, his wife Val is pregnant with their first child. A secretary informs him that the company's chief, Miles Sellers, is ready to have a meeting with him. Dodge enters Miles' sleek, ominous-looking office. The chief somehow knows the poor financial background of Dodge. Miles calmly tells him that he can become a multi-millionaire if he plays a game, which is basically a homicidal hunting spree. Dodge is shocked to learn that a game like this exists, so he initially refuses the offer to participate. But Miles manages to convince him with the lucrative money, and as Dodge is desperate, he eventually agrees to take part in the game. In the next scene, the series goes to a flashback to a few days earlier, showing how Dodge ended up meeting Miles and participating in the homicidal game. Dodge used to be a track star and record breaker at the University of Michigan. It's early morning and a voiceover of the broadcast calls of Dodge breaking the record while he's going for a casual run on the city streets. But Dodge has been experiencing painful headaches. Whatever he's sick with is serious. When he's back home making breakfast, we can see that his sickness disrupts simple tasks such as making eggs as he drops them on his kitchen floor. He notices late bills that have yet to be paid for his medications, adding to his stress. When we meet his pregnant wife, Val, it further proves the fact that Dodge is not well, as important things like preparing for his baby all rely on his job that is falling through. But Val is supportive, and she knows that they can get through. Later, the couple goes out to Dodge's best friend, Luger's bar. Luger also lost money in his investment with Dodge, but he's still uplifting and sympathetic towards his best friend. One day, Dodge is walking outside when he's overcome with pain and collapses on a sidewalk. He's taken to a hospital, where the doctors tell Dodge that he has terminal brain cancer, and the tumor in his brain is inoperable. As he and Val leave the hospital in despair, a hospital nurse gives him a business card for a company called Tiro Fund. The nurse tells Dodge that the company supposedly helps those with terminal illnesses that are financially struggling. When Dodge tells Val the news about his diagnosis, she's also understandably devastated. Dodge then confesses to her that he doesn't have health insurance or life insurance because he sold his insurance to help pay off some of his business expenses. Dodge's parents are dead, Val's parents are broke, and they have no one to turn to for financial assistance. The movie then brings the audience back to the present day, where Dodge is in Miles' office. Miles begins to explain the dangerous game, where Dodge will be the hunted. It's a 24-hour hunt. Every hour that Dodge stays alive during the game, he earns a certain amount of money. And the hourly rate increases every time he reaches a certain level in the game. If Dodge is still alive at the end of the game, he can win a total of $24.5 million. All of the money will be deposited in a secret account in Dodge's name that Dodge can monitor to verify that the deposits are being made on an hourly basis. According to Miles, the hunters in the game are elite wealthy clientele who hunt to kill and who want desperate humans to hunt. Dodge won't know what these hunters look like as they can be any race or gender until the hunters reveal themselves to him when they attack. Dodge won't know in advance how many of them will be hunting him. They can ambush Dodge, and it's also possible that more than one hunter will go after him at the same time. Miles also explains the rules. Dodge cannot stop or pause the game once it starts. He cannot tell anyone he's in the game, and he cannot leave the city. If he breaks these rules, the game will never end until he dies. The hunters can use any weapons except guns while trying to kill Dodge. And not surprisingly, Dodge can't tell anyone about this game. Miles convinces Dodge that even if Dodge dies during the game, 
Dodge can still make enough money to financially take care of Val and their unborn child for several years. And all of that is enough to convince a desperate Dodge to agree to participate in the game. Although he doesn't come to that decision right away. He decides to go through with it after a sought-after, last-chance business investor named Jerry Pierce rejects Dodge's proposal to invest in his debt-ridden Carrington building. That night, Dodge lies to Val that he had a good deal with Pierce and tells her that he's going out for a run. Then he meets Miles in a diner. The game starts at sunrise at 6.46 a.m., as Miles takes all of Dodge's belongings, including his phone, but leaves out his medication and an ultrasound of his child. Miles then gives him a phone to track his location. For 15 seconds every hour, the phone will send Dodge's current location to the hunters. While Dodge is running around town trying not to get killed, Val begins to notice large amounts of money being deposited in Dodge's bank account. The game begins, and Dodge comes across his first hunter, Nixon, who's a British gentleman, in a mall bathroom. He manages to escape Nixon, but is soon approached by the second hunter, Regan, a southern cowboy. Meanwhile, Val learns that Pierce didn't agree to invest in their building, and calls Luger to help her find out what's going on. At this point, she's figured out that Dodge, who hasn't come home, is in deep trouble and involved in something illegal. Miles has a creepy henchman called Connell, who shows up at the hunter's crime scenes to clean up messes and get rid of evidence so that the game can stay secret. Elsewhere in Detroit, Tiro Fund headquarters is decked out with a lot of high-tech computer equipment that tracks Dodge's whereabouts at all times, such as showing which streets he's on, regardless if he's in a car, on a bus, on a train, on a ship, or on foot. In the next scene, Dodge manages to escape both of his hunters and get on a train. He then goes to a church to acknowledge his sins. He enters a confessional and confesses to a priest that he got engaged in something evil and now cannot get out of it. In the meantime, Val and Luger foolishly go to the bank branch where Dodge has the account and try to discover who's behind the mystery deposits, but they only end up looking suspicious themselves. They leave the bank in a hurry when the desk worker they've been speaking to offers to get the manager for them. When Dodge doesn't answer her calls, Val gets suspicious. She calls the police, but they're unable to file a missing persons report. Back in the church, Dodge punches a devotee, thinking he's one of the hunters. But the air in the room quickly changes when Dodge realizes that the priest, whose real name is Carter, is actually one of the hunters. A psychologist by profession, Carter reveals that he used Dodge's background profile to track his next move. He attacks Dodge with his hammer, injuring him. After a struggling duel between the two, Dodge manages to lock Carter in a small confinement, although he ends up getting hit with the hammer on his leg. Connell is just outside the church and learns of the situation inside. He then reports it to his boss, Miles. Because of his leg injuries, Dodge cannot run anymore. He tends to his wounds and comes up with a plan to blend in with a crowd of spectators who have just finished watching a game in a stadium. Nixon follows him, and after observing the crowd for a while, spots Dodge. Fortunately, Dodge manages to get in the car trunk of a family and escape the chase for now. Back at home, Val is tense since her husband hasn't been in contact. She goes through his file and finds the Tiro Fund business card. Dodge realizes that the family is heading toward Birmingham, which means he will soon be out of Detroit. But that's a violation of the rules, so he alarms the family and gets out of the trunk. Stunned to find a stranger in their car trunk, the husband attacks Dodge, but only ends up getting assaulted. The wife soon reports the incident to the police, while Dodge apologizes for his desperate behavior and takes off. He then steals a cab nearby and heads to his home. But the hunt isn't over yet. Just when he's heading inside, a biker comes after him and attacks him with a rod. Val, who's been waiting for her husband, sees this and fearfully informs Luger. Dodge quickly gets into the cab and escapes while the biker chases after him. The biker turns out to be Carter. Dodge speeds up the vehicle, crashing into a tree nearby, 
but saving himself from any serious injury. He then kills Carter when the psychologist threatens to sexually assault Val. Connell learns of the situation and takes care of Carter's corpse. He then updates it to Miles. Meanwhile, Val follows the business card and goes to the location mentioned on it, only to find the Tiro Fund building empty. Next, Dodge is still being tailed by Regan, so he gets on a tour ship. But he still needs to put on a fight when he realizes that the stewardess on the ship is another hunter named Kennedy. She's a martial arts expert, so she effortlessly has the upper hand in a fight. But just when Kennedy nearly kills Dodge, he manages to set her clothes on fire. Later, he manages to throw her into the waters as he escapes on a nearby bridge. In the following scene, a couple of thugs get a hold of Dodge and his phone, which shows a bank account with 15 million. They identify that Dodge's medication is fake, to Dodge's surprise. But the thugs just want money, and when Dodge tries to explain to them, he only gets beaten real bad. The commotion is interrupted by the fifth and final hunter named LBJ, who initiates a shootout, killing almost all the thugs. But when LBJ is about to end Dodge, one of the injured thugs shoots him from behind, killing him. This gives Dodge the chance to escape, but he's soon pursued by Nixon. Connell arrives at the scene and begins his usual job to clean up the mess and avoid getting caught by the authorities. Next, Dodge merely escapes the chase and then goes to the hospital where a nurse confirms that his medicine is fake and that there are no records of him ever being admitted there. He calls Miles, who admits that Dodge does not have a terminal illness and had been set up to accept the game. Miles reveals that Luger is the one who accepted $50,000 to drug Dodge and explains that the rules still stand. Dodge quickly calls Val and lets her know that they were outplayed and his cancer isn't real. He explains that Luger is part of this play and alerts her to stay away from him. But soon after, Val is kidnapped by fake police officers and taken by Miles as a hostage. Next, Dodge sets traps for the remaining hunters, Nixon, Regan, and Kennedy, in his dad's old construction shop. The three of them arrive and go after their prey. The first one to brawl with Dodge is Regan, who gets his hand trapped and bloodied with a beam. Kennedy then goes after her prey, but is shot dead by Luger, who just happens to be there at the right moment. Luger then explains that Miles was just bluffing about him drugging Dodge. The pair then gets outside the building, but not before Dodge blows up the shop, killing Regan. In the meantime, Nixon escapes. When Connell arrives to clean up the mess, Dodge attacks him and demands to know where Val is. Connell reveals Miles had set up their base at the Carrington, Dodge's failed high-rise development. Wasting no time, Dodge heads to the Carrington and finds the building abandoned and Val tied up. The couple finally embraces each other, but their reunion is cut short by Nixon. He chases Dodge to the rooftop, and in the ensuing fight, Dodge falls off and hangs from the building's ledge. Nixon prepares to kill him by stabbing his hand, but he sees the sunrise, puts his weapon away, and politely helps Dodge back on his feet. It has been 24 hours, and the game is finally over. Nixon then congratulates him for a good game before walking away. Val reunites with Dodge, who gets a final call from Miles, telling him that he has won the game and the money.